Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel called Living in Hayward, Wisconsin, where we talk about all things real estate related and also just about living in Hayward. I'm Audrey Miller. I'm the broker owner of Northwest Wisconsin Realty Team. We have a team of agents and our office is located right on Main Street in Hayward. So stop in sometime if you're in the area. I'm not there all the time, but if you want to arrange an appointment with me, that's fine. Otherwise you can stop in and talk to whoever happens to be on floor time that day. So today we're gonna dive into the third part of a series I've been doing on the lakes in and around the Hayward and surrounding areas that I cover in my real estate practice. So we had a tier one lakes video about a month ago. I did a tier two lakes video a couple weeks ago, and now I'm doing a tier three lakes video. And this will be the final one in that series. So I'm gonna just kind of go through what those lakes are, what the price points are on those lakes, and kind of what you can get for your money if you're looking on what I would term as the tier three lakes. So join me and I'll see if I can share some helpful information with you. So as always, feel free to reach out to me directly via email, phone call, text, if you're interested in buying or selling property in and around the Hayward and surrounding areas. Also, I'd love if you would subscribe to my channel, click the notifications button so you get notified whenever a new video is posted or comment or share my channel with someone that you think might enjoy it. So let's talk about the tier three lakes. So as an overview, if you watched my tier one or tier two videos about the lakes in the area, you'll understand kind of the concept. Obviously this is based on opinion as far as what makes a lake a tier one, two or three, but it's also based on price point. The higher the tier, the higher the price point leading you to a conclusion that lake is probably desirable to more buyers, thus being a tier one lake, same on down the line. So with a tier three lake, it is going to be no more than 1500 acres. You know, that's on the high end down to, I think the smallest one is around 800. And the price points are going to be a little less than tier one and two. These are also lakes that I would not be asked as often about by buyers. So in other words, my rating system has to do with desirability, price point, location, and how often often buyers are requesting and wanting to be on these specific lakes. So it's kind of that combination of information. These tier three lakes are by no means lakes that are in any way undesirable. They're actually very desirable lakes, but they just don't make the cut of tier one or tier two. So don't be offended if your lake is on this list and I'm classifying as a tier three lake, you may consider it to be the best lake in the area and that is completely fine. But I'm kind of using the criteria that I mentioned. The tier three lakes are in the area that I cover, which is the only lakes that I'm discussing about 45 minutes in any direction from Hayward. And they have a lot of reasons that they are desirable to many people and so I'm going to kind of go through them one by one and talk about each one and about the price points on those lakes where they're located and just a few extra details about those lakes. I also would like you to watch till the end of the video because I'm going to give you information on a lake that is probably the easiest tier three lake to get on in the area and it might be something you want to consider if you're looking at a tier three lake the price points for these lakes are an average of 525,000 sale price so on the higher end around 650 on the lower end in the 400s but of the 10 lakes that I'm going to discuss, that's the average price point. So if you're looking in that price range, then this video might be really helpful to you. I also wanna say tier four lakes and five are going to be everything that's not one, two or three. And I don't plan to do more videos on those because there are so many of them. So I'm going over in these tier one, two and three lakes, I'm probably mentioning about 25 to 30 of the lakes in our area. Beyond that, there are so many more. They're usually smaller than 500 acres. They might be a little bit further from amenities, they may not be quite as clear or they could be super clear, but just on the smaller side, any of those factors could lead them to be tier four, tier five lakes, but there gets to be so many, I'm talking like probably a hundred more at least in the area that I cover. So we have tons of really great smaller lakes, but what I found is a lot of people wanna be on a bigger lake. So that's kind of why the rating system, but if you're good with a smaller lake and you want like good swimming frontage, good clarity, great views, and you're not as concerned with being able to go out and spend the day on the pontoon, maybe you're just looking for good fishing on a quiet lake. We have many, many other lakes in the area that would fit that bill. And I would say the entry level price point right now for any lake in the area is around 250,000 and that's going to be either on a really small 
small lake. It might be a condo cabin or a fixer upper to get into something that is relatively nice on a tier three lake or four or five and maybe is a 1, thousand, 1500 square feet and has its own lot, not part of a condo association. You're probably looking around 350 for an entry level price to the lakes in the area that I cover. There could be a few exceptions, but that's that's basically the overview of price points just to give you kind of a general synopsis as I'm finishing up this series on the, the lakes in the area. Okay, so tier three lakes. First of all, let's give you an overview of where these lakes are located within the area that I cover. So we'll start from the north. So we have the Minon Flowage, which is located right here. Some of the properties on the Minon Flowage have an address of Gordon, but really it's kind of to the west of Wascott and Minon. So this is the Minon Flowage. And then going this direction, we've got Big Mackenzie, Middle Mackenzie, and or Mackenzie, this chain of lakes here, essentially straight west of Trigo and northwest of Spooner. A little bit in the middle of nowhere, but that's where Mackenzie is. And then we'll just kind of make a circle here with the 10 lakes we're talking about today. Let's Let's go down here to Bear Lake, which is down by Hagen, kind of on the way to Rice Lake, not far off of Highway 53. Then we have Lake Chatek, not to be confused with the town of Chatek or the other lake that is by the town of Chatek, which is quite a ways south of here. This is spelled C-H-E-T-A-C, Chatek, it looks like. And it's in the Birchwood area, Edgewater Birchwood area. And then we'll come over to Lake Winter, which is over here, just a few miles outside of Winter. We've got Moose Lake, which is about a half hour to four 40 minutes east of Hayward, kind of a little bit in the boonies out of Moose Lake, but very pretty country close to the Shawamigan National Forest. Then we have Teal Lake, Lost Land Lake, and Spider Lake out here. And I'll get into those a little bit more, some details of those. And then the Tiger Cat Flowage, which is kind of covered up by these words, but that is in this area right here, the Tiger Cat Flowage. So those are the lakes we're going to be discussing today, but I just kind of wanted to give you a general map overview of where they are located in proximity to Hayward, which is right here, or the Stone Lake area which is down here. So let's get into the details of these different lakes and the price points and information more specific to each lake. So we're going to start with the most expensive of the tier three lakes which is Mackenzie. This is the chain of lakes that is to the west of Trigo so definitely closer for people coming from the Twin Cities. It is a little further from amenities so a little bit more in the middle of nowhere like I mentioned but you're really not too far from Spooner and it's not too far off of Highway 53 if that's the way that you're coming you know from the Twin Cities if that's if that's where your primary home is located. So Mackenzie is made up of three lakes the one that is just called Mackenzie, but is typically referred to as Big Mackenzie, that's 1,129 acres. Then you have Middle Mackenzie, which is 520 some, and then the Upper Mackenzie is only about 200 acres. So the price points vary based on which of those lakes they're on. I am not certain if you can navigate between the three lakes. I think you can between Big and Middle, but I'm not 100% sure. Maybe someone wants to leave a comment and let me know. This is not a lake that I have spent any time on. I just know that it does get pretty good prices, and that's why I called it a tier three lake and also I've seen it in person numerous times and it has really nice shoreline and really clear water and I hear from buyers that it's a very desirable lake so as you can see nine properties sold on this in the past two years I went back the whole way to September of 2022 for this analysis again I am not including any condo properties in these comps and like I said I went back two years to try to get a good average our market is down a little bit if you watched my fourth quarter update it's down about nine to ten percent but I still feel like overall looking back two years is a pretty good comparable set of information on these prices. So 650 average, the sale time frame on these is remarkable. This means that this was a lot of cash sales because 55 days on market total tells me that there's a lot of people that want to be on McKinsey and they are snatching up these properties as soon as they become available. So the next lake is Spider Lake. Spider Lake is the closest to Hayward of the quiet lakes. So I just want to talk about these three together, Spider, Teal, and Lost Land. So Spider Lake, does allow water skiing and you know doing uh, faster speeds between 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. every day but otherwise it has a 10 mile an hour speed limit just like Teal and Lost Land but the difference is that Teal and Lost Land don't have any exceptions to that so it is a 10 mile an hour speed limit there's no motor size maximum you just can only go 10 miles an hour so we have the quiet lakes which are made up of Teal, Lost Land, and Ghost. Ghost is a smaller lake, so I don't include that in this information. But those three are the true quiet lakes. And they are some of the only ones in our area that do not allow
allow the recreational sports at all, not even at certain times of the day, and the 10 mile an hour speed limit. So these are not appealing to everybody, but for some people, they are very appealing because you have the quieter things like fishing, canoeing, kayaking, pontooning at a slow rate of speed and everything like that. So Spider Lake does have the exception of four hours in the middle of the day that they allow the water skiing, but otherwise this is also 10 mile an hour speed limit. Spider Lake and Lost Land Lake are right around 1,200 acres and Teal Lake is about 1,000 acres. And as you saw from my map that I showed you at the beginning, these are kind of one after another in a row off of Highway 77 east of Hayward. One of the downsides for these and what kind of makes them tier three lakes, maybe instead of two, is that they are further from the Twin Cities, further from amenities, further from Hayward. By the time you get out to Lost Land Lake and Teal Lake, you can be 45 minutes from Hayward, driving back roads to get to your cabin, not to mention the distance to get to Hayward from wherever your primary home is. Now, I often talk to people as if these are all second homeowners. There's obviously people who live full time on these lakes, but the majority of our lake homeowners are second homeowners. I'd say probably at least two thirds. So that's kind of why I gear the videos that way. But that said, even if you're living there full time, you're going to have a further drive to amenities like a Walmart or a gas station. There just is not a lot east of Hayward other than there are bars and restaurants and some bait shops and that kind of thing, but just not much in terms of other amenities or any shopping or getting you know supplies. Etc. So Spider Lake is the most expensive of these lakes. You can see there's only six properties that sold. Again, very, very short time on market, 64 days. Average sale price of 635000 So properties move very quickly and not a lot come up for sale. Teal Lake, like I said, is just over a thousand acres. This one is very difficult to get on. Look at this. Only two properties have sold in the past two years, which is just insane. So if you want to be on Teal, you may have a challenge just getting on there at all. The average sale price was 480000 This one took very long to sell because it had really, really undesirable frontage. So this is skewing the time frame since there was only the two comps. You can see this one sold very quickly and over full asking, whereas this one took a long time to sell due to the frontage on that property. It was kind of barely on Teal Lake, even though it technically was. Lost Land Lake, very, very pretty area out there. You, you go off of A on Highway 77 and you start winding around go past the Lost Land Lake Lodge where they have a really great fish fry. But you can get way up in the boonies in Lost Land Lake area, but it just has beautiful, beautiful forest out there. And you feel like you're in the true wilderness. A lot of times on this lake, there's bigger lots. There's a little more privacy. The neighbors aren't quite as close. Um, not always, but a lot of times. And it definitely has its pluses. You know, I, def I have buyers who call me that say they only want to be on the quiet lakes, but they're in the minority compared to those who would rather have the full recreational lakes. So five properties sold on Lost Land lake 55 days on market only again extremely quick sales on this lake and 449,000 for the average sale price it starts to make me think that people on these lakes could ask a little more for their properties due to the fact that they're selling so quickly and going under contract almost right away i would guess there's some cash buyers involved in this i mean this one closed in 12 days time and this one in 43 so those are those are very uh, quick closings and i wanted to mention one thing that might seem confusing to you there's some tier two lakes that are actually smaller than the tier three lake lakes. So it's interesting, some of these lakes, in fact, a number of them are larger than whitefish, sand, stone, but it's about location and it's about the water clarity and just overall desirability and how many people want to be on those lakes. But it's kind of an interesting piece of information. Then we've got Moose Lake. That's again, east of Hayward a little ways, but kind of south of Spider Teal and Lost Land Lake. Only three properties sold on this lake, average of 534,000. And this was a longer time on market. Again, probably a little bit skewed by this property, but this one took quite a while to sell as well. Now Moose Lake is a flowage, so it gets drained down in the wintertime, kind of like the Chippewa flowage. It doesn't have that clear water. It has more of the brownish tannins. It connects to the river the Chippewa River. So some of the houses on Moose Lake are actually on the river and have more of a channel view, but they have access to the lake itself. And that's considered to be part of the lake, but you may have to go down the channel or the river a little bit to get to the, the main part of the lake, but it's very boatable. So it's not an issue if the place is located on the river, at least generally speaking. And, um, you know, Moose Lake is a nice area right by the Shawamigan Forest, but again, a little bit further from amenities. And this lake is actually about 1600 acres. So relatively large body of water and closer to Hayward than like Lost Land Lake would be. And then let's talk about Lake Satek, kind of changing areas. This is the one down by Birchwood. So 14 properties sold on this lake for an average of 532,000. Again, relatively quick time on market. As you can see, the most expensive was just under 750, going the whole way down to 275,000, but that was like a major fixer upper situation. The thing about Lake Shatek, it's 1,920 acres. So it's a good size. It's in a great location, but 
but it has an issue with the water turning green in by July or August of each year. And this is one of the only lakes in the area that I cover that turns pretty noticeably green. It's almost like a pea soup color by the end of the year. So if that's something that's an issue for you, you'll want to avoid Lake Chatek. But if you like the fact that it's in a great area and it's a good size of lake and there's bars and restaurants on and all of that, then this lake may be one for you to consider. But I think the reason the price points stay a little bit lower and why I would not classify it as a tier one or two lake is simply because of the water clarity and how it turns green uh, partway through the summertime. All right, then let's move on to Bear Lake, which is located in the Serona area, kind of Hagen area. This is kind of right along Highway 53. If you were coming north from Rice Lake, it would be on the west side of Highway 53 as you're heading north. So Bear Lake is about 1,300 acres, very nice, clear lake. Not many properties come up for sale there, only two sold on this in the last two years, average of 512,000, 46 days on market. So again, some of these lakes are just difficult to get on in general. Now, Lake Winter is one that is to the east of Hayward, but more south and east. So Winter is going to be about three hours from the Twin Cities. Lake Winter is located very near to the town of Winter. It's a good musky fishing lake, Class A musky fishing lake. It's 676 acres. It doesn't have the really clear water clarity, but it's somewhere kind of between the color of Moose Lake and maybe a lake like Rhinestone or Le Coudre, where it's super clear. I think this lake is a is a tier three lake because it's the biggest lake in the winter area. It does get an average sale price of 443000 and it has a great location in proximity to the town of winter. It has a lot of low elevation on this lake, which is very nice for being able to just walk out of your cabin straight down to the water. And it's still relatively affordable. So uh, the properties on that lake sold for 100.1% of asking price and 69 days from time on market to closing. And there was a decent amount that came up for sale, but you can still get a really nice cabin on this lake for in the 400 to 450 range and be on a pretty big lake. So I think that's a good one to consider. And then we have the Tiger Cat Flowage. The Tiger Cat Flowage is just over a thousand acres. It's made up of five separate lakes. So the navigability between the various lakes is pretty good, but somewhat limited depending on which lake that you're on, the size of your boat, because there is a bridge to go under at one point. So you may or may not have access to the entire acreage that's available there, depending where you would purchase your property. And that's something to ask your agent about, you know, and make sure that you have the access that you want or need when you're on this lake. Again, Tiger Cat is a flowage, so this does have a lot of mucky shoreline or weeds that kind of thing. There's a lot of back bays and little channels in this lake. So there are some places with really sandy frontage, but there's a lot of mucky or a little bit less clear water and clear frontage on the Tiger Cat. But location wise, it's great. You're only about 15 minutes from Hayward, maybe 20, depending where you are on the Tiger Cat flowage. And the prices are relatively reasonable. The average sale price was 430,000. Again, selling very quickly and nine properties sold on there in the last two years. So from October of 2022 to October of 2024 which is where we are right now when I'm recording this video. And then I told you if you wait till the end, I'll give you the lake that is possibly the easiest to get on in a tier one lake category. And that is the Minong Flowage. Look at all the properties that sold on the Minong Flowage in the last two years. Granted, this is a large lake. It's 1,500 acres. It's in a great location in terms of proximity to Twin Cities for second homeowners. It is a flowage again. It gets drained down in the wintertime. It has that tannin brownish colored water, but it's a very big lake. It's got bars and restaurants on it. It has a lot of interesting boating that you can do. It's long and narrow, so kind of a little bit shaped like Long Lake, except about half the size. And it has an average sale price of 511000 And again, everything's selling pretty quickly on there. But I think that if you're looking for something more to the west of Hayward and you don't mind being just a little bit further from the center of things in Hayward, the Gordon Minong Wascott area where the Minong Flowage is located could be a good option for you. And then I want to talk a little bit about the vacant land that's sold on these lakes because I like to give you that option as well. You know, I have this conversation with people fairly often where they think they're just going to buy land and build instead of buying something that's already there because they feel like they can't find what they're looking for or it's too expensive to buy something that's already built. I can tell you that buying land and building is not only going to be more difficult in terms of finding a piece of property, but the building costs are very high in our area as I think they are across the country. So you are definitely going to get more for your money if you buy something that's already built per square foot. You might be shocked to find out what building costs are right now. You know, it ranges obviously depending on the level of finishes and fixtures, but it can be anywhere from 300 to 350 on the low end up to five, five 
550 on the high end. That is 550 per square foot. So you start doing the math on that plus buying the land and you're going to get into some significant money pretty quickly. So if you are looking at vacant land, there are still lots out there and you can talk to me about that. Reach out. I'd be happy to help you. But I would suggest trying to get hold of a couple of builders first, finding out their lead times and finding out approximately how much it would cost you before you secure the land. So as you can see, 18 lots on these lakes. Now, this doesn't include the Tiger Cat. I added that after I pulled this report. There were four properties on the Tiger Cat that sold as well. But the majority of these are on Minong Flowage and on Lake Shatek. So the Birchwood addresses would be Lake Shatek. The Gordon and Minong are the Minong Flowage. So again, easiest lake to get on for vacant land as well in the last two years was the Minong Flowage. And that may have been, you know, the Minong Flowage is probably getting built up more and you'll see less land coming available. But as of the last couple of years, it had the most vacant land sales. There was a couple on Lake Winter. I think the most significant thing about this piece of information on the vacant land is that on all of the lakes that were to the, the quiet lakes, Spider, Teal, and Lost Land Lake and Moose Lake, there were only two properties that sold that were vacant land. There's this one on Upper A, I believe that was on Lost Land Lake, and then this one, uh, I can't remember if that was on Spider or Teal. So pretty interesting, a few vacant land properties have come up on those lakes. Average sale price for this for all the vacant land is 172,000. Vacant land always takes just a little bit longer to go under contract, especially on a tier three lake. So that's not too surprising to me to see that statistic. So I hope you found this helpful. Like I said, this is going to be the end of my tier lake videos. Everything else I would consider to be a tier four, five, and the, a lot of the rest of them I would group together. I do want to mention a couple that are kind of on the verge of a tier three and tier four that I didn't include in this. One is Lake Trigo. Another one is Nancy Lake. That's over by Minong. And then another one is Gull Lake. And then I would also include Hemlock and Birch Lakes, which are part of the Red Cedar chain that I talked about in the tier two lakes. They get fairly high prices, but I would consider them to be part of the Red Cedar chain of lakes. So I hope you found this helpful. As always, feel free to reach out if you have any questions, interested in buying or selling. Feel free to subscribe, like, share, comment on my channel. Maybe somebody will tell me the navigation uh, situation over on Mackenzie Lake since I wasn't aware of how that works or what lakes you can get to from the others. But again, I'm Audrey Miller. I'm with Northwest Wisconsin Realty Team, and thank you so much for joining me today.